Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations with absolute values. We have the absolute value of z equals the absolute value of z minus 2 and the absolute value of z plus i equals square root of 5. Remember i is the number whose square equals negative 1 and z is a complex number that can be written as a plus bi. And what is this channel called? A plus bi. All right, let's get started. So how can the absolute value of a number z equal to the absolute value of the same number minus 2? Think about it with real numbers and you'll find some answers, right? Obviously, the absolute value of 2 and 4 are not the same, right? But if you think about the absolute value of 1 and negative 1, they are the same. And if z is equal to 1, this is going to be satisfied. But is that going to satisfy the second equation? Absolutely not. So we need to solve it. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. And for these kinds of questions, these are called, I think, locus problems because we're kind of looking for a set of points that will satisfy the, uh, these two equations and we can actually graph them on the coordinate plane. Not on the complex plane, I'm talking about xy plane on the real plane. So that brings us to z equals x plus yi. So for this problem, we're just going to assume that z can be written as x plus yi. x represents the x-coordinate or the real part, and y is the imaginary part. So what is the absolute value of z, right? The absolute value of z is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. And the absolute value of z minus 2, I don't know what it is, so let's go ahead and find out z minus 2 first. If you subtract 2, it's only going to subtract the real part because the imaginary part will be unchanged. So the imaginary part uh, will stay the same and the absolute value of z minus 2 is going to be real part squared plus imaginary part squared and then square root of that sum. Make sense? So we have this equation and then let's go ahead and take a look at the second one. The second one tells us z plus i. What is z plus i? We know what z is, sort of, x plus yi. And then we're adding another i to it, which is like kind of like 1i. And now these two imaginary parts are going to be added. And that's going to give us x plus y plus 1 times i. So the imaginary part is going to change this time because we're adding an imaginary number. Make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and write that down and set it equal to root 5. The square root of x squared plus y plus 1 squared square root of that is equal to square root of 5. So we got ourselves a good system in two variables, and they are real. Remember, if z is a complex number, x and y are defined to be real, and i is imaginary. Okay, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this, and I'm going to show you a graph which kind of explains the situation. Okay? If you square both sides for both equations, it will be good, and it's not going to hurt the equations because they're both supposed to be positive inside. So we're going to get from the first one, x squared plus y squared equals x squared minus, at the same time, I'm just going to expand it, okay? And then, interestingly, x squared, y squared cancel out, leaving us with a 0, and that gives us 4x equals 4, which is super duper nice because this tells us, hey, x equals 1. Well, didn't we already talk about it? We said that 1 is going to satisfy the equation. Well, my statement at that point was kind of half true because... Yes, one would satisfy it, but that was only the real part. You see, there's also an imaginary piece to it. All right? Now let's go ahead and work with the second equation. Square both sides. And you do know that x is equal to 1, so you can just go ahead and replace it with 1. And it's going to make your life easier, which is good. Now subtract 1 and square root both sides. This gives you two solutions, which is nice. y plus 1 is either 2 or negative 2. And this tells you that, hey, y is equal to 1, or y is equal to negative 3. Awesome. We're going to see this on the graph. So what does that mean? I got two y values for a single x value. And remember, z was written as x plus yi. This means we have two solutions, right? If you go ahead and uh, go back to the original, we're supposed to have two solutions because z is x plus y. Okay, let's go ahead and write them down. z sub 1, one of the solutions is going to be x, which is 1, 
plus 1i. And the other one is just going to be 1, because x is only single, minus 3i. So there are two values which satisfy this equation. And if you go ahead and uh, substitute them into the original equations, you're going to notice that they actually satisfy. We can go ahead and do it real quick, because I guess um, people usually like it when we check our work. If you go ahead and plug in 1 plus i, the absolute value of 1 plus i is just going to be square root of 2. If you plug in 1 plus i here, this is going to give you negative 1 plus i. The absolute value of this number is also square root of 2. So the first equation checks with the first solution. Let's go ahead and check the first solution with the second equation, which was the absolute value of z plus i is equal to square root of 5. If z is 1 plus i, then this is going to give you 1 plus 2i, whose absolute value is absolutely square root of 5. Therefore, first equation passes the test. Yay! How about the second one? Let's do it. 1 minus 3i. If you plug in, let's go ahead and clean this area so we can start fresh. And now we have 1 minus 3i. If z is 1 minus 3i, its absolute value is just going to be square root of 10. If it is 1 minus 3i, subtract 2 from it, you're going to get negative 1 minus 3i, and its absolute value is again going to be in the square root of 10, because as long as the numbers are 1 and 3 in absolute values, then you have the same thing. Second equation, 1 minus 3i plus i is going to give you 1 minus 2i, whose absolute value again is square root of 5, so that also passes the test. Yay! Passes the test with flying colors, we got 100%. Awesome. So, both of these solutions work, and we are basically good. So, these are the only solutions to the system, right? if z is a complex number, of course. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see what this means. Now, the graph in Desmos, as you can see clearly, is a circle and a straight line, and they intersect at two points. They don't always have to be that way, obviously. The line could have been tangent to the circle, which means there would be a single intersection point, or they would not intersect at all, which means there would be no solutions. That's quite possible, right? But, wait a minute, aren't these two circles? No. The second one is a circle, the blue one, but the pink one is not a circle because remember, x squared and y squared both cancel out, leaving us with a straight line. Actually, not any ordinary straight line, a line with infinite slope. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.